Benjamin? Yes. By what? Yes. None. Yes. Motioner, yes. Shoko? Yes. Bill Meyer, absent. Donovan? Here. Lillard? Yes. Uh, this regular meeting of April 11, 2011, be declared a legal meeting. Moved by Roger. Jamie seconds. Comments. Roll call. Jacobs. Coco. Punchman. Yes. Light one. Yes. Yes. Punchman. Yes. Bill Meyer absent. Donovan. Yes. Lloyd. Yes. At this time, excuse absences. Uh, the board excused the absence of Dennis Domeyer. Uh, <coughs> Any comments? Mm. Roll call. Donovan? Yes. Whitewine? Yes. None? Yes. Oshner, yes. Chalkoff? Yes. Domeyer, absent. Jacobson? Yes. Feinschmidt? Yes. Nolan? Yes. <coughs> We are up to welcome visitors and uh, public here. Uh, to remind you, please, if you have cell phones, to either turn them off or to silent. I appreciate it. At this time, that uh, we open it up to any correspondence or anyone that would like to speak to the school board. I'd like to speak. Uh, recognizes Mr. Williams. Um. I know it's been going on for quite a while, and um, I haven't been to the school board and talked yet about it, because I was hoping it would get fixed on its own, but that doesn't seem to be the case. So I thought I'd come today and let you know what is what happened um, and what is the actions that have been taken to make sure it doesn't happen again. American Legion Post 68 requested a speaker for the Veterans Day program from the Department of Veterans Affairs, Speaker's Bureau. The VA sent out a name, Glenn Freeman. The program was sent to the school by email that uh, Sunday, uh, week of Veterans Day. Uh, the day of Veterans Day at 410, Mr. Rose contacted me and said he had some concerns about <coughs> Mr. Freeman um, and asked if I could uh, get a copy of Mr. Freeman's speech. I said I would email him and ask him for it. Um, he asked what uh, Mr. Freeman would be speaking about. I told him that he was a VA employee and he would be speaking strictly on Veterans Day and what the VA does for veterans. Um, he had some concern that uh, for some reason that Mr. Freeman would speak off topic. I reassured him that uh, I wouldn't allow that. Um, about um, 10 minutes later, um, I had a veteran in my office, so I was working on that with that person before I could send an email to Mr. Freeman to get a copy of his speech. Um, got a phone call again from Mr. Rose stating that uh, Mr. Freeman would not be allowed to speak. I asked why, said there was something with the Tea Party and they were concerned he'd speak off topic. <coughs> I asked what we were going to do for Veterans Day then, and he said that a student had put together a slideshow program. I once again tried to reassure that Mr. Rose would not speak off topic, and if he did, then I'd be the first one to go up there and correct it. I've been getting speakers for Veterans Day programs for a lot of years, and I've had some younger veterans, graduates of this high school, who started to use profanity when they were talking in front of the students, and I walked up and corrected and if anybody would have spoken out of turn, I would have corrected them. So at that time, it came to me, the person that requested the speaker, to get a hold of Mr. Freeman and his VA uh, boss for the speaker's bureau. Um, I contacted uh, Mr. Freeman's boss and told him what was going on. Um, he was not happy. He didn't understand. He said, Mr. Freeman speaks on behalf of the Veterans Administration at every event that the VA holds. Um, he also, I said, well, you know, the school's made their decision and we're kind of out of it. I said, and he said, then don't ever request a speaker again from the Veterans Administration. And so I moved on and I contacted Mr. Freeman and I told him uh, 
what was going on and that I apologize profusely on behalf of the American Legion and myself for putting him in this situation. Um, and he emailed me back within two minutes um, apologizing to me that, we brought, that he brought any problems to the American Legion. And I responded back to him right away saying, you did it. Um, we need to be apologizing to you. So that whole scenario took only about 40 minutes. Um, the Veterans Day program was held. Um, prior to the Veterans Day program, we had a Legion meeting that Sunday. The appropriate itinerary for Veterans Day program was handed out at that time. This was before all that happened. So veterans were emailed uh, a program that stated that Mr. Freeman would speak. And the veterans that were at the Legion meeting that day was giving a uh, program that he would speak. So on Veterans Day, many veterans asked where Mr. Freeman was. I told him to stop by the office, and I would talk to them about what happened. Um, many, many veterans did stop by the office or called and wanted to know what happened. And um, the only person I told that day uh, of what had happened was the Legion commander, um, who I hadn't had the opportunity to talk to until that morning. What happened? Since this happened, about every, every month I get phone calls from people stopping by the office about uh, you know, coming to the school board asking for certain things, you know, like the speaker's policy. And I did watch the school board meeting at the last, uh, it was on a video on YouTube, and that's why I'm here today. Because I heard stuff about, you know, partnership, well, you can't have any partnership without some trust. And obviously, um, the administration here doesn't trust the federal government, the VA, the American Legion, or myself. Um, so this has caused uh, quite a few problems, trust loss with the Legion and myself, citizens' lack of voice in school matters, because it took them so long to get on the agenda to get this addressed. Um, more separation between the school and the citizens. So what has been done? The veterans had asked for a written policy for the speaker. Um, and like I said, in all the years I've lined up, I've never asked to see anybody's speech. Um, we asked them to speak on Veterans Day for Veterans Day program, and that's what they speak of. The veterans, um, the Legion and VFW will make a decision based on what this school board does. If they have a speaker's policy that we feel we can follow, then we will hold a Veterans Day program at this school. If we don't, then we will hold one on our own. Um, and it is, uh, you know, I was more than upset when veterans were coming back to me saying that, you know, the school board wouldn't put it on the agenda, wouldn't talk to them. I found that the most disturbing fact of this whole thing. So, since I do a lot of legislative stuff for the Legion and VFW, I did contact uh, several state senators and ask them what to be done. There is a bill. It's, it's in committee. They didn't bring it out because they had budget issues. But it will be out, and I can guarantee you that the Legion and the VFW will support it across the state. And it states that any elected board will allow citizens to put things on the agenda for action, 48 hours before the meeting. If they do not follow that, then they will receive no public funds from the state or from the county. Um, and it's sad that we have to go that way. Um, in speaking at the veterans meetings, I've tried to hold the students um, exempt from any problems. We've had veterans at meetings that wanted to stop everything in the scholarships we give away to support in the boy state, girl state, you name it. And I've said the school, uh, the veterans groups won't do anything to hurt the students. Um, I believe, uh, even though I've apologized to Mr. Freeman several times, that those who made that decision to cancel him owes him an apology. This man gave his life for service. He served 30 years in the Air Force. After that, he went to work for the disabled American veterans. 
And then after that, he went to work for a state senator as a veterans liaison. And now he's employed as the speaker for the Veterans Administration. Um, the fact that somebody said no apologies are needed, that's regrettable. So, as far as I'm concerned, it's in your guys' hands now. Um, the Legion of VFW and myself will watch and see what happens, and we will base what we do after that. Um, it's sad that it's taken this long, and I think the reason that veterans are, uh, many of the people that came and spoke are veterans, is because anytime anybody's speech is denied free speech, they take it pretty personal since they gave part of their lives to ensure that everybody had freedom of speech. That's all I've got to say. Thank you. Does anybody have any response to Mr. Williams? Well, I'd like to say thank you for coming. It's nice to hear this from you. Because I know you had something to do with it, so it's very nice to hear. Eric, as, as the president of the school board, and it's in, regrettable that we've got to this point also. Uh, and it's one of the ones that uh, I apologize to the veterans if there are the hard feelings there, because there should not be. And it gives us all the same thing, you know, the freedom of speech. Agreed with it 110%. It's both ways, you know, and that's. That's what we are thankful for. So that's what I can offer to you. It's not really on the agenda to talk about tonight. Should be um, talked about at least at this point. Did we? Um, we never told anybody they couldn't speak during the forum. We did be denied. I've been told I wasn't able to go to the gym. The first time I came and talked, I requested and I sent a copy of the bill. And I was just trying to I was told I couldn't speak. I couldn't speak during the public. Why? Who said that? You did. Would you like to have an email response? You sent an email back to me and said that I would not be allowed to speak except during the public forum because there was no action. We don't, we don't take and just put a citizen on the agenda. It's by policy. We don't put you on the agenda. If you want to talk about agenda items, we'll recognize you there. Our, our policy actually says Eric couldn't talk tonight about something that's not on the agenda. We've been allowing it for some reason, but... We have public forum. Well, Isn't that what that's for? Then um, we'll just follow up with the legislation and we'll deal with that. That's just not in her, you know, that's... I can find you the policy, but yeah. I mean, I think it's fine to let the you public know, speak, but our policy says your they policy, have to address that's something that's on the agenda. The city council, the county board, all let citizens put things on the agenda 48 hours before a meeting. Obviously, they must be more intelligent than the school board. We, just, we have policies we need to follow. Yep. Yeah. Now, evidently, we need a policy on common courtesy. You know, a simple apology would have solved this thing many, many weeks ago. Uh, I've been a postmaster in this town for what, 24 years, and I made numerous apologies. Somebody came and said uh, a mail was delayed for a week. I would apologize. Of course, it wasn't my fault, but I'm, you know, I would apologize and. Uh, and they were happy because somebody cared. <clears throat> so it's too bad that this didn't happen in this case. We've got professionals here that uh, I think dropped the ball, and I apologize for that. As you know, I, I, my, my name is Jerry Marshall. I live here in Geneva, um, taxpayer. Uh, as you know, I spoke a couple months ago. And after I left, I, I, I thought about it. Am I going to get any feedback? I didn't hear anything. That's an issue that I feel strongly about. Is it worth lighting the world on fire? No, probably not. But on the other side of the coin, it's about right and wrong. And it's about people doing things right and wrong. And I think. Efforts were being tried to make by several people to correct it. 
to get it straight and to go on with things. 